This program aims to find solutions to your medical queries. It seeks answers to common health problems that have been hounding you. We will help you out in finding answers to your medical concerns. I'm Angel Hakob and this is MedTalk, your weekly on-air health consultation here on the Solar News Channel. Destiny played a prank on 31-year-old Apple Roma. Apple, a medical technologist, has been working as a section manager at the Diabetes, Thyroid, and Endocrine Center of St. Luke's Medical Center for nine years when she was diagnosed with thyroid cancer. Nagtuturo kasi kami ng ultrasound ng thyroid sa mga trainees namin. So, minsan nagiging test patient ako. Tapos yung partner ko nung tuturo, so this is the thyroid, this is the right, the left, the middle, and the carotid, ganyan. Tapos accidentally, nakita na may bukol sa right thyroid. After nun, na uh, ma-recommend for biopsy, lumabas nga na uh, thyroid cancer siya. To prevent further damage, Apple underwent a surgery to have her thyroid removed. Nakaka-depress din nung una. Uh, kasi I have to undergo surgery and then therapy kasi more or less alam ko kung ano yung mangyayari sa akin. Uh, Naka-recover din ako mabilis after noon depression because of the support of our doctors. According to a 2010 study of St. Luke's Medical Center, thyroid cancer ranked as the fourth cause of death among women in the Philippines. Thyroid problems arise when there are imbalanced hormones produced by the thyroid. Simple signs and symptoms that can lead you to the diagnosis of having a thyroid problem. Well, number one is uh, most people are concerned with weight. No? You gain weight or lose weight very fast. These are probably signs and symptoms of having problems in metabolism. Second is, if you notice, you can look at your neck. If you notice, there are enlargement in the neck or some hard nodules in the neck that is already a sign that you have probably goiter, no? an enlargement of the thyroid gland. Several treatments are now available to help patients with their thyroid disorder. There are now a variety of ways to manage the thyroid. Of course, there is surgery, but even in surgery, no? we have the minimally invasive. If, if you don't want to have a scar, we, we do that here in St. Luke's. No? And if you have uh, what we call a minimally invasive surgery, we also do it here. And you, we have uh, radioactive iodine, where we try to burn the thyroid gland. And sometimes we also use medications to help resolve the functionality of the thyroid gland. What are the symptoms and complications of thyroid disorders? Who are more prone to thyroid disease? How can we avoid thyroid ailments? Find out the answers tonight on MedTalk. Joining us tonight is Dr. Joy Castillo Fontanilla, endocrinologist from the St. Luke's Medical Center. Also joining us is Dr. Rochelle Cauton Valera endocrinologist from the Philippine Society of Endocrinology and Metabolism. Good evening, doctors. Good evening. Welcome to the show. Tonight, we'll be talking about our thyroid. First, let's locate our thyroid. Where exactly is it located and what is its shape? Well, basically, it's in your neck. Okay. I can show you. This is, ah, yes, uh, this is a, uh, our windpipe or trachea, and this is the thyroid gland. It's like a butterfly-shaped thing in front of your in, in front of your neck. So it's just underneath your Adam's apple. Okay. So the men have an Adam's apple. It's easy for them to locate their thyroid. How about the women? Do we also have an, a little apple Yeah, there? we all have actually <laughs> okay. an Adam's apple. But in guys, it's more just much more prominent. What is the function of our thyroid in our body? Well, your thyroid gland actually produces thyroid hormones, which serve to regulate metabolism or how efficiently um, your body uses energy or how efficiently it runs. It also regulates the function of all your organs. And um, in children, it's important because it's important for growth and uh, mental development as well. Mm -hmm. You mentioned the importance of the thyroid. What are the other um, factors that, that uh, contribute to the importance of our thyroid in our body? 
I guess you can see that in, in, in thyroid disorders. You know, we usually see a lot of patients that say, hey, I'm gaining weight, I must have a problem with my thyroid. Why do they identify yeah. it right away with the thyroid? Well, maybe because I think even lay people already know that the thyroid has something to do with the metabolism. And um, if metabolism slows down, they associate that with gaining weight. And you know, Filipinos, you'd rather attribute it to something else rather than yes. I ate too much or I don't exercise. But yes. a lot of people um, may have a thyroid disorder, which may lead to weight changes. So we have to be aware of that as well. So weight changes, weight gain, and weight loss. Um, usually that would be their primary concern, but there are other uh, symptoms which are common as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when the thyroid, we've, we've mentioned and we've talked a little bit about when uh, your thyroid is functioning well or how active your thyroid should be. So when your thyroid is not as active and you uh, manifest the signs and symptoms, as you mentioned earlier, Dr. Valera, Valera that uh, you may be gaining weight? Yeah, oh. so, um, well in endocrinology, it's usually, to put it simply, um, when we have hormones, the problem would be th there's too much or there's too little, just to put it simply. So if you have thyroid hormones, you can have too much, so we call that hyperthyroidism, like hyper, super, mm -hmm. overactive thyroid, you have too much of the thyroid hormones, or if you have too little of the thyroid hormones, your gland is not producing enough, then it's called hypothyroidism. Okay. So let's talk about hyper thyroidism, when you're uh, producing too much of it, what happens to uh, an individual when you produce too much of this hormone? You have too much thyroid hormone in your body. It can affect, I think, from head to toe. So your heartbeat can be very, very fast, so people can complain of palpitations. You can also complain of feeling warm or hot all the time. So even if you know, in an air-conditioned room, you may be sweating while everybody else is comfortable. Mm -hmm. yeah. And also, you can have mm -hmm. problems with your um, bowel movements. People have to go to the bathroom quite often. After they eat, they have to go. Okay. Uh, you were about to add something, Well, doctor? since um, if you think of thyroid hormones simplistically, uh, you can think of it like the electricity going through an appliance. So you can imagine a 110 voltage appliance that you plugged into a 220 appliance. Like if it's an electric fan, it will suddenly start moving very, very fast and eventually um, some explode, right? So you can imagine all your organs moving too fast. So some people, they talk too fast. Um, as Joy has mentioned, they're, they're sweating all the time. They feel hot all the time. Um, uh, they may feel very irritable or restless, and they may even exhibit tremors as well. Mm -hmm. And the physical manifestation of someone who has a hyperactive thyroid is that they're very thin and that their eyes tend to bulge. Why is that? Well, it's, um, the usually, usually the cause for that is an autoimmune problem called Graves' disease. Graves. It was named after Dr. Graves. Okay. Yeah. And um, basically, the, your own body is attacking itself. So it's attacking your thyroid and making you produce too much thyroid hormone. Mm -hmm. And it can also attack the muscles around your eyes mm -hmm. so that they swell up. Mm -hmm. any bulge out. Would you have an yeah. example of uh, someone who has a hyper? Hyper. Well, this would be one. Hyper. The, the thyroid gland compared to the normal one. Yes. It's much bigger. Okay. Yeah, it can be much bigger and it can grow even bigger. Mm -hmm. yeah. And these um, people tend to have very high thyroid hormone levels. And they're like, yeah, like a car on the racetrack. Just, just moving, moving around hyper. and around and, and, and they expend so much energy. Yes. Yeah. So usually they complain that they eat so much, but they are losing weight. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing. And also their skin may be thinner. Um, sometimes they'll complain that their, their hair is falling off faster. Um, so is there a certain age when one notices it? Um, or it spans through all ages? All it can age happen groups? at any age, but it's commonly seen in women in their reproductive age group. Mm -hmm. so 20s? Yeah. 20. Sometimes, you know, we might identify someone who has a hyperactive thyroid as just someone who's very energetic, who just has a lot of energy to expend. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's like that. <laughs> Sometimes. How about in kids? We speak of energy. Kids have so much energy. So how do you identify one who has a problem with their thyroid, in this case, a hyperactive thyroid, and one who's just being a kid, being very energetic and being very playful? A simple blood test can solve the problem. You can, you can tell if someone has a thyroid problem, both underactive or hyperactive, through a simple blood test. Okay, you mentioned, doctor, a hypoactive thyroid. Uh, one's thyroid is not as active as um, one diagnosed to be hyperactive. So let's talk about the hypoactive thyroid. What does this mean and what are the physical manifestations of one who has this? 
Well, basically the opposite of what Dr. Valera explained earlier. Someone who has an underactive thyroid tends to gain weight mm -hmm. or tends to complain of feeling cold all the time. I feel cold all the time. Yeah. <laughs> they're constipated, mm -hmm. they're sluggish. Some of you feel very depressed and lethargic. Okay. Yeah. And why is this? What happens to um, one's thyroid when um, they feel all these uh, symptoms? Well, um, since, uh, as we said earlier, your thyroid hormones really serve to regulate function of all your organs as well as metabolism. If you have too little, uh, well, you're like a 220 appliance that was plugged into a 110. It's functioning, but it's very slow. So as Joy has mentioned, everything slows down. And since you are not using your energy properly as well, yes. then you tend to gain weight as well. Then you're constipated and uh, you feel lethargic or sleepy all the time and uh, yun nga, pwede rin depressed. Uh -oh. So you again have to take a blood test because sometimes if you're sleepy all the time, other yes. people will just say, Hindi, I'm just tired, you know, yeah. I had a long day and I'm really just sleepy. So any, uh, is there a particular um, physical manifestation that one has a hypoactive thyroid? If the hyper, they lose so much weight, the hypo gains weight? They tend to gain weight, but actually weight weight gain people keep saying oh it's my thyroid yeah. it's an yeah. underactive thyroid. you always blame it on the thyroid yeah. <laughs> but it's really more of an overactive fork and spoon okay. <laughs> <laughs> your love rating lang. Yeah. yeah so gaining weight should not be the gauge not just that. not just yeah. that a simple blood test can solve everything okay we'll go back to talking about our thyroid how underactive or how active it is but first we'll go to our twitter questions my mother was diagnosed with Hyperthyroidism. Is it possible that I can inherit it? Okay. Well, it's possible. There are certain uh, cases of familial graves, as Joy has mentioned, the graves disease. It can be familial, but for some people, unfortunately, it just so happens that you're the only one in the family who gets it. So yes. it's also possible that it happens that way. Mm -hmm. But if you have a family history, as with any other illness, if you have that family history, it makes you more aware. And then you should be uh, more conscien conscientious about checking yourself up. And as Joya said, it's very simple to check it out. Um, you just do a simple blood test. And we can even detect subclinical yes. uh, diseases, uh, which basically are diseases which has uh, which have not reached clinical proportions or are not obvious or do not cause symptoms, but only show abnormalities on the blood test. Mm -hmm. So it's really wise to, to um, monitor how the changes in your, uh, the changes rather, in your body. Like I, I, I remember um, reading that if one has a hyperactive thyroid, the eyes tend to bulge. And you will notice this, uh, you know, in, in this day and age of selfies and everybody taking yeah. pictures, you will notice a change in one's appearance because of, of, of this. Um, well, yes, that can happen if you have what we call Graves disease, but there are other causes of hyperactive thyroidism, uh, hyperactive thyroid diseases, which do not cause those eye signs. And there are other people who have no symptoms at all, like especially in the elderly, they, they, they might experience like heart problems or rhythm abnormalities when in fact it's really a thyroid problem and they have none of the symptoms that we mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it can be very, very subtle. And because it's very, very subtle, again, we have to be very watchful yes. of all these signs and symptoms. And if we feel something or we notice something, then have a blood test right away. Yes. Doctor will, doctors will talk more about this when MedTalk returns. Did you know that Pierre Joseph de Salt was considered to be the father of thyroid surgery. The first documented partial thyroidectomy was carried out by Pierre Joseph de Salt in 1971. He removed a 4 cm mass from the thyroid through a vertical incision, tying of superior and inferior thyroid arteries, and then dissection of the gland from the trachea. We are back here on MedTalk, still talking about thyroid conditions. 
Doctors, how about goiter? Uh, yeah. Is it a manifestation of someone who's a hyperactive thyroid or a hypoactive thyroid? Basically, goiter is just a fancy word for enlarged thyroid. So it can happen in people with hypothyroidism, it can happen in people with hyperthyroidism, also can happen in people with normal thyroid function. Mm -hmm. It's just that their thyroids are enlarged. Why, why does this happen? Would you have a... Well, it can look like it this. It can look Sorry, like this. Also. Okay. Yeah. So why does it happen? Why, why does goiter happen? Um, the most common uh, worldwide cause of, of goiters is uh, iodine deficiency. Okay. So about 40% of the world population is at risk for iodine deficiency. In the Philippines, um, since we've been using iodized salt in a lot of lot, lot of the regions in our country, it's the uh, prevalence has gone way down. Mm -hmm. But in the mountain provinces, you know, where, where they have no access to much, not much access to seafood, then um, iodine deficiency is much higher. So iodine should always be part of our meals? It should be part of our diet, yeah, because so your body can't make iodine. Okay, so we have to take it and we have to get it from, from seafood. Food, yeah. Mm -hmm. you, you can also find it in eggs and dairy products. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why does our body need iodine? Because iodine makes up thyroid hormone. Okay. So thyroid hormone is made up of iodine and, and other proteins. Mm -hmm. Okay. Doctors will talk more about that. We'll talk more about the treatments and medication. But first, we have a question from Facebook. I'm four months pregnant now and I have goiter. Will this affect my baby? Well, basically, as Joy has said, um, the thing is when lay people use the word goiter, it can refer, as Joy has said, the way we use it, meaning that it's an enlargement of the thyroid. But for other people, when they use the word goiter, it really means there's a problem with my thyroid. Either I'm hyperthyroid or hypothyroid. Since the uh, person who sent the question didn't really say if it was a goiter or really a hyper or hypo, the answer would really depend on what the condition is. If she has a goiter, meaning an enlargement of the thyroid, but the thyroid function is normal, then this should not affect her baby but if she is hyperthyroid meaning her gland is overactive of course this can affect uh, development uh, she can have a difficult time and if you, she is hypothyroid the same is true as well meaning that if you're pregnant and if you have hypo and hyper or hyper you have to ensure that you see your doctor carefully so that medications are given at the right dose mm -hmm. can she pass on um, this condition to her baby um, yes it's possible but again, uh, she has to have herself checked and to balance these hormones, she has to see a But it may not manifest doctor. right away in the baby, you know, when they're born. But I'm glad that we have, you know, we've, we've um, included newborn screening, the thyroid function, we've included TSH in the newborn screening, so that babies are now screened for thyroid problems. Mm -hmm. So if the mom, again, we'll go back to the mom, the Facebook question, the mom has, um, is, has, is complaining about, about her, her thyroid, um, it will not affect the baby. Well, it, if it is a non-toxic goiter, meaning that it's just an enlargement of the thyroid, but your thyroid function is normal, then it should not cause any problems, except if the goiter is so large that she cannot breathe anymore or is causing obstruction. But okay. if she has hyper or hypothyroidism, then definitely she should see her doctor, her blood tests have to be done, and medications which are appropriate will be prescribed and titrated accordingly. Because as the pregnancy progresses, yes. the dosage also has to be adjusted. And we have to bear in mind that some of the meds can affect, of course, cross the placenta, affect the fetus, so we really have to adjust those. Mm -hmm. We talk about medication, so let's now go into the medications that one needs for a hyperactive thyroid. Yeah, for hyperactive thyroid, we have um, three ways of treating it. One is to give oral medications, um, and that's usually, usually given for a year, a year and a half. And then um, another option is for radioactive iodine, which um, can actually uh, destroy your thyroid. Okay. Okay. In people with hyperactive thyroids, um, that is one of the recommendations. And another option is surgery. And that's usually reserved for patients with very large thyroid glands, mm -hmm. um, wherein the other two may not work as well. Mm -hmm. uh, bef uh, I, 
while you were uh, mentioning that, how about the tests that are done? What type of blood test is done to determine if you have a hypo or hyperactive thyroid? Uh, we call these thyroid function tests. So you just get a, you know, a, a needle prick and then your blood is extracted and we order for a free T4 or, or a free T3 along with a TSH or a thyroid stimulating hormone which are readily available in almost all the uh, hospitals and all the laboratories uh, nationwide mm -hmm. even without uh, but you have to get the prescription from the doctor you have to get um, the go signal from your doctor to have well, these tests. I think certain okay. hospitals or laboratories do allow it other hospitals need uh, a request from the physician okay mm -hmm. so we go back we were talking about the hyperactive thyroid and the treatments and medications about the hypoactive thyroid to balance those hormones? What are the proper so medications? If you have hypothyroidism and you have too little of the hormones, we just replace the hormone. So we give levothyroxine, which is basically the name for thyroid hormone. So we just give it to them. It's a simple tablet. It's very cheap and you just have to drink it once a day. What does it do? How does it affect the thyroid, these medications? Well, basically, um, uh, the levothyroxine for the hypothyroidism, since uh, you do not produce the thyroid hormone, you're just supplementing or giving what is lacking. Mm -hmm. So it will perform exactly what thyroid hormone does, which is to regulate your metabolism in the proper way. Mm -hmm. and, and these regulate uh, the, your metabolism, so your um, being diagnosed of a hyper or a hypo becomes normal already. Yeah, once you're at the right dose. And you need to be monitored periodically. So you have to yeah. balance the, yeah, the dosage. The blood tests have to be monitored. Okay, so, and then you recover from this. It never comes back? Or is it with you forever? It depends on the cause okay. of your hyper or hypothyroidism. Okay, so it can be cured. It can be it cured, It does yes. not need to recur. Well, if it's Graves' disease, it's forever. It's a lifelong thing. So you have thing. to take medications yeah. for well, life. Medications are one of the other options that Joy has mentioned, the surgery or the radioactive iodine therapy, which are the definitive therapies. Because, you know, some patients, if you tell them, you know, you have to take these pills for one to two years, then I'll try to stop them. Maybe you'll go into what we call remission. Yes. But, you know, that only happens in about 30%. And some patients, if they compute how much that costs, they'll say, oh, the amount I spent, I should have done the radioactive iodine a long time ago. So some patients, they do opt for that already because, of course, medications do have side effects as well. So some patients, they don't like that. Mm -hmm. And um, so for us to uh, keep our thyroids healthy, what should we do? What should we eat? What kind of lifestyle should we have, Dr. Jeff? Well, basically, just uh, living a healthy lifestyle, eat a balanced diet. Um, make sure you have iodine, you know, your well supplemented iodine. Because too much or too little is not good for the thyroid also. Okay. Doctor? Well, basically, that uh, as Joy has mentioned, you just have to ensure you have adequate iodine intake. But unfortunately, for some of these diseases or most of these diseases, there's really nothing we can do to prevent it. No? And like if you have Graves' disease, there's nothing really we know that can stop it if you are destined to have it, you will have it. So it's not like diabetes or let's say hypertension na or cholesterol na you watch your diet, yes. this will not happen to you. But with the thyroid, sometimes that will not happen. The only thing we can prevent would be if it is iodine deficiency. And if we have a, uh, iodine in our diet, which is sufficient, then you don't get these problems of having too much or too little of the iodine. But a lot of the thyroid disorders that we have, there's no means to prevent it really, mm -hmm. unfortunately. So but um, fortunately, we have the medications, and fortunately, yes. we can watch we can what control we eat, it, yeah. we can control it. And yes. fortunately, we have doctors like you to help us along the way. <laughs> doctors, we have a question from Twitter. I was advised to have my thyroid removed. This was what you were saying earlier. Mm -hmm. What are its effects on me? The effects, I guess they're asking about the effects of the, the removal of the thyroid. Yes, yes. Um, well, Complications of thyroid surgery are related to cutting up. Mm -hmm. So, any anytime you cut up somebody, you can be prone to infection or bleeding. And because it's in the neck, um, our parathyroid glands are there also, and those glands are in charge of our calcium levels. So your calcium levels can go very low if they are taken out inadvertently or injured in the process. Mm -hmm. You also have your uh, nerves there that control your voice box. So some people get hoarse when those nerves are cut or injured mm -hmm. during the process. Okay. 
Then if the thyroid is removed, um, there's no other source for thyroid hormones. So if your thyroid is removed and you cannot produce sufficient thyroid hormone levels, then you will develop the hypothyroidism, which is easily treated as we mentioned earlier. You just take hormonal uh, replacement therapy of thyroid hormone. Okay, so that is the effect of, of taking it out. How about the uh, radiation that you mentioned? Radioactive iron. Ra radioactive yeah, you, can, iron. you can become hypothyroid after that, or you can have a normal thyroid function after that. Mm -hmm. So it really depends on um, how much radioactive iodine you got and how much thyroid tissue is left behind. Mm -hmm. These treatments are available here? Yes. Yes. Like radioactive iodine has been around for more than 50 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, we talk about the treatments. We have a question from Facebook that also addresses that. Are there medicines that can help prevent thyroid problems? So, <laughs> have it, uh, take it before um, you have it. Is that proper? Um, unfortunately, there's none. So there's okay. really no medication we can give to prevent it. Okay. So. Some people can say they think I'll just you know take in a lot of iodine. Unfortunately, as Joy has mentioned, mm -hmm. if you take in too much, it can also prompt a thyroid problem. So basically, no, there's nothing we can take to yeah. prevent. Unfortunately, and there are a lot of people that keep taking these kelp yeah, that's supplements. Right. Okay, self medication it's, again. Yeah. yeah, not really a good idea because you might take too much okay. iodine. In the just process. so they protect their thyroid, <laughs> they'll self-medicate or like the question they want to take in something already so that it doesn't become overactive or underactive unfortunately there's nothing we can give for prevention for a thyroid problem right. really so um, there's nothing we can give for that there's nothing for prevention how about in kids who have um, a hyperactive or an underactive thyroid medications also or would you also recommend um, radiation how does this go there's a certain age that we don't give uh, radioactive iodine to, you know. So generally, si below 16, we don't want to give them radioactive iodine. Okay, so it's yeah. just um, taking, taking the medication. medications. How about medical breakthroughs when it comes to um, solving or, or addressing thyroid problems? There are new um, developments. There. <laughs> no, no, it's been relatively stable. And um, I mean, I guess the medications we have, they do work. It's just a matter of knowing how to use them, when to use them, at what dose, and to monitor for side effects. Mm -hmm. And to educate your patient that not just because you're on the medication, you can opt not to see your doctor anymore. Yes. You really have to go see the doctor regularly. Because mm -hmm. sometimes there are, there are side effects to the medication. Yes. Um, there are breakouts that, that, that might happen or there are... Um, functions in your body or you feel different from, you know, sometimes you opt not to take them because um, maybe you feel more tired or maybe your skin becomes worse. Yeah. So, but, but you just have to continue because it's normalizing or regulating the hormones and the in the doctor body. has to actually titrate the dose, which is perfect for you because each patient will really be different. So okay. we just have to tell them to be patient, to come back, and uh, we'll be titrating those dosages for them. Mm -hmm. So any advice, doctors, that you would like to share with all our viewers on how to take better care of our thyroids? You know, we, we don't really notice it being there or we don't really understand its function until it uh, signals that there's something wrong. So how do we take good care of our thyroids? Well, basically just live a healthy life. But I would like everyone uh, in the audience to to take a look at their necks, you know, okay. look in the mirror. Take Self a look. test. Yes, look in the mirror and try to try to um, palpate your 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 neck and thyroid and see if there are any lumps there. Okay. And definitely, if you have any lumps, please go to your doctor right away okay. and have yourself checked out. Mm -hmm. Oh, you mentioned lumps. Uh, we can't uh, um, we cannot not talk about the topic of um, thyroid cancer. Yes. Let's talk a little bit about that. So, um, how does this develop and the treatments and cure for thyroid cancer? Well, for thyroid cancer, usually it will manifest as a mass or a, a lump in your thyroid, and usually it's faster growing than the other kinds of lumps which are benign. And uh, well, compared to other cancers, most of the thyroid cancers for most patients are um, better treated compared to the other cancers. All we need to do is to completely remove the thyroid, and we do the radioactive iodine therapy, and we do give levothyroxine therapy suppression as well. And we just have to. Well, sometimes, you know, patients, they don't want to see the doctor because, you know, sometimes I don't want to know that I have cancer. But yes. you see, um, I will use the word 
curable yes, <laughs> because okay. for thyroid cancer we can do that if we catch it early so that's I think that's another message if you have a lump in your thyroid don't be afraid to go to the doctor because we can easily well potentially cure that if we catch it early enough so you have to go see the doctor right away okay doctor yeah so, well, we'd like to thank both of you for helping us understand more about our thyroid, helping us take good care of our thyroid, and, you know, we should, yeah, we should do a self-test, self-check. It's, it's easy when you look at yourself in the mirror every day, yeah. do that test. Thank you very much, doctors. Again, I'd like to thank Dr. Joy Castillo Fontanilla and Dr. Rochelle Cauton Valera for joining us in our discussion. See you again next Tuesday on MedDoc, 10 p.m. on your scheduled on-air consultation on the Solar News Channel. This is Angel Jacob. Good night. <laughs>